Uh, Steve, first question I'd like to ask is the is your reaction to the Maersk announcement yesterday of a 1500 uh, per 40 foot rate increase across the board and what your reaction to that is? Well, do you know I really believe that the industry should be sustainable, you know, and if they did their calculations and think they need another $1,500 increase then so it be, but I think uh, that there was one really thing missing and that's explaining to the people exactly what they get for that in return. Um, you know, there is no industry that could cope with a, let's say, an average increase of 25% from one day to another. I mean, uh, I haven't seen another industry where that really works. Uh, I also think they lost the opportunity a little bit to maybe simplify things a little bit or, let's say, increase with a thousand, but then simplify the process of container demerges and detention worldwide, where I've understood a lot of carriers are also losing a lot of money in. So um, I think they just missed a little bit of opportunity, although it was brought very Hollywood style. So, uh, but we'll see how the market reacts to that. You, um, in, in the panel discussion after, after that announcement, you mentioned that you'd been looking at, you thought that the way that carriers and their customers negotiate rates could be done in a, in a, different, in a different way. Could you elaborate on that slightly for us? Well, traditionally, um, uh, container carriers have been trying to quote based on commodities, to what's in the box. And uh, probably that have worked uh, until, let's say, a couple of years ago, 10, 15 years ago. But the world market became a lot more complex and more sophisticated, you know. Nowadays, and you can see that also a lot of carriers are still organized, you know, politically in countries. But, you know, the world doesn't work like that anymore, you know. It's very possible, to give you an example, in seed potato, for example, as a commodity, you know. It's very possible that a Danish company buys from a Scottish producer uh, uh, a thousand tons of product and ask someone to move that product to Antwerp uh, to have it uh, transshipped in a reefer container and ship it out. Now for a carrier they start to get very nervous because you know they can't really identify the parties it would be too complicated to do that and then we question ourselves is it really necessary to fix your prices? Why do you try to base your pricing on the value of a commodity in a container you know the shippers have difficulties to understand why one commodity should pay more or less than the other so we really call more for a process where they really quote uh, with regards to their assets you know where are their containers you know do they need containers there in another place instantly do they have space left on that departure or another departure so a little bit like the yield management in the airline industry and I know one of the the, the gentleman in the, in the debate said that, uh, well, sometimes you buy a business uh, ticket at a higher price than another person. Yeah, that's correct, but it has to do with the time when actually the booking was made. So that's also a parameter. And we really think that carriers should focus on return on investment of their assets. So concentrate the whole processes, the whole process, I'm sorry, of uh, pricing with regards to that and not to the commodity. You know, many of the carriers try to uh, try to get a full understanding on how commodity flows and who the parties are involved, but it would take them at least four or five times more staff. And that's only for 6% of their business, you know, for the reef business. So can you imagine? I think they need to find another model, and we all need to find another model to get the cargo quicker to the vessels in a more efficient way, because pricing is also a very expensive um, a process in, in well it's just a part of the process but it is a process that is required of course so we need to find for better ways to do that that would um, that would require a great a greater uh, amount of partnership between carriers and their customers do you sense carriers moving towards that kind of realm at all well <laughs> Well, we've been thinking about it. Well, of course, we are, a, we are a forwarding company. They see us as a classical forwarding company, but we're moving more, uh, as Food Care Plus, we're moving more to a facilitator. So a, uh, a company that is developing platforms to bring carriers and cargo closer together, but validate all the information in there. You know, we don't really believe anymore in forwarding companies in 10, 15 years. I mean, the way they are organized right now. We think they, they need to concentrate themselves more on, um, on facilitating the cargo into, well, let's say, the available uh, means of transportation. And I think we like that, you know. There are going to be a lot of opportunities, you know. The, a lot of industries and countries are 
implementing more regulatory compliance requirements. Food safety will uh, will demand that there is much better traceability. They want to know what is loaded where and who touched the cargo. So it means a lot of information, valuable information comes into the picture that can be used by the industry to make quicker and more, uh, more uh, interesting decisions when it comes to the price. And I think, and that's what we are doing as a company, we've created a platform, actually it's, it's not public, but we created already a management console that would allow us to price automatically based on parameters that are available, being uh, what has been allocated on a ship, how much cargo is already on a ship, how much space do we have left, how much containers do you want in a certain destination, and how much do you have at origin. You, when you have all those parameters, you can actually instantly quote every second and do that really based on validated information through a system. That's how I do it. That. All right. So that's that's more as a as a freight manager than a freight than a freight right broker, as it were. Well, freight forwarders don't own the cargo, nor they should pretend they are a cargo owner because they're not. You know, it's it's very funny. The industry still thinks like they thought. You know, like 10, 20 years ago. You know, they speak when they speak with freight forwarders. They ask, "How much do you have of cargo?" Well, I'm sorry, we don't have cargo. We just know people that do have cargo, and we would be able to advise them that you would be a potential good partner to get your cargo to the other end of the world. I mean, it's just, we need to change our mindsets a little bit, you know, think out of the box, because we've been working like this probably, well, not I, I'm 36, but <laughs> we've been working for, for decades in, uh, in a model that not has really evolved, evolved a lot, I think. This is a non-sector, but uh, lastly, I just need to ask you what, you, what, you, what your experience of this year's Cool Logistics um, conference has been, where you think they're, what's been the benefits, what's been the weaknesses, and where you think future conferences, what trends and challenges future conferences will be talking about? I think the most interesting part of uh, the Cool Logistics conference is, is that it, well, it forces us a little bit, all of us here, and there are a lot of uh, top executives here, to a little bit think about our own future in the industry. You know, we're always very busy with a lot of things. But really, when, when I finish this conference, I'm always very pleased that it brought me a lot of new ideas. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, we use those ideas to, to, to start up uh, internal um, uh, marketing plans and things like that to try to get a better grip on what's moving and what's living in the market. Mm -hmm. And I also think, uh, you know, uh, they've managed with the organization to really bring uh, qualitative people here that do communicate and go into debate to discuss topics that are important for the future in our industry. Excellent. Steve, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.